1360thesource.com. Hi, Scott Fitzgerald for Will. This is Yoga, the other 98%. And uh, we'll be doing this until 8 o'clock. We do it every week here at 7 o'clock on 1360thesource.com. And uh, got a special guest this week. See if I can hit the buttons and keep you locked in here, Yogani. Hi, Yogani. This is Scott Fitzgerald. Glad to have you with us. Hi, great to be here, and thanks for inviting me back. Yeah, well, it, uh, it was great to have you here before. Great to have you back, and we get to have you for the next couple of weeks. Uh, the good Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. Well, that sounds wonderful. Okay, and uh, I know you've got many many of your uh, practitioners and uh, folks that come to your website, which is advancedyogapractices.com. That's advancedyogapractices, with an S, dot com. And uh, if they'd like to check in, our telephone numbers here are 877 345 Three seven seven nine eight seven seven three four five three seven seven nine. Locally in the Cincinnati area, it's five one three seven four nine thirteen sixty. And you can listen live on the web at thirteen sixty thesource dot com. And uh, Yogani, how long have you been doing the uh, doing spiritual practices and then putting them down on paper or on web, whatever the case may be, in the beginning? Well, uh, as we talked about last time, I started way back uh, in the early 70s with my practices, and it evolved over the years, uh, over 35-some years. And uh, the actual writing started a little over three years ago. So I kind of got to a point in my life where I felt like I better write what I've learned and discovered down so maybe it will be useful to somebody else. <laughs> so that's what we've been doing the last three years or so, and it's been a wonderful adventure. Well, for and for just three years, uh, you've been quite prolific, um, writing not only advanced yoga practices, easy lessons for ecstatic, ecstatic living, which is uh, a 500-plus um, page tome. Um, you've also got some of the other smaller books. Would you care to describe some of those that are available for folks at advancedyogapractices.com? Yeah, sure. Fairly uh, soon after uh, the first book was published back at the end of '04, um, two years ago now, um, I realized that many people would not want to be reading a 500-page book, <laughs> that they might like to dip into meditation or uh, breathing techniques or interested in Tantra or uh, even the connection of uh, yoga postures to the rest of the sitting practices that we, uh, that we discuss in AYP, as we call it sometimes. So I started writing small books. And um, there, are, uh, there are, let's see, we have... Uh, four of them out now, uh, and then a new one's coming out in January, so that will be, uh, that will be five altogether, and then there's four more scheduled after that, which I, if I, if my fingers can keep up, I hope to finish those by the end of 07. Okay. And we also have the novel, um, that's been out, uh, for about a year and a half called The Secrets of Wilder, which goes through the discovery of the practices, um, in a fictional story, but the real practices are in the book as well. Yeah, and there's a there's a lot that you can glean from it because in the book itself, the secrets of Wilder, basically the text the, the techniques are are outlined there. Um, I'm not saying that those would replace either the website or the uh, the actual advanced yoga practices book or any of the other smaller uh, volumes, but there's quite a bit there. I mean. Well, the way I describe it is the novel is a way for people to vicariously live the journey without having to necessarily go through all of the ups and downs. Uh, and there are a lot of lessons in that, uh, which, you know, you may not find in the, um, in the textbook and the, and the, uh, instruction books, if you will. A lot of ups and downs when it comes to it. Uh, what, today, why don't we, why don't we discuss deep meditation, which is the basic, um, not the, necessarily the end all, but it's the, uh, the practice that we need to work work towards, no matter what we start with, whether it's asanas or tantra or or breathing, um, it all leads to deep meditation. That's right, and and from and I'm going to use the acronym AYP. If everybody would excuse me, that stands for Advanced Yoga Practices. But in AYP, deep meditation is the core practice, and that's not true in all uh, approaches to yoga. In fact, the the quote unquote traditional approach to yoga is. Uh, uh, much more laborious uh, is the way I would describe it, where you have to learn all sorts of things before you're considered to be qualified to learn how to meditate. But in AYP, we start with meditation, and uh, that makes it a lot easier to do everything else because um, the foundation of yoga is inner silence, and we all have a natural ability to be quiet inside. I think 
everyone knows that. Everybody has had those moments, those aha moments where they just feel so peaceful and so quiet and so expanded. And, and then you're back in activity and where did it go? You know, how do I get it back? And the, the technique of deep meditation we use in AYP is a very easy way to contact that stillness inside every day. It's a very easy way, but it's let's not let anybody be surprised by how powerful it is. It's very powerful, uh, very effective. In fact, uh, it only requires about 20 minutes twice a day um, to get all you need. Uh, and that's in contrast to other methods that might have you sitting for hours and hours every day meditating and doing other kinds of exercises. And uh, the approach that we use is not like that at all. It's it's uh, it's kind of like uh, doing your, your hygiene in the morning, brush your teeth, take your shower, you know, meditate and go out and live your day fully, come back and meditate before dinner, before your evening activity, and then be as active as you'd like to be. So this is an approach that's geared to busy people with families and with jobs and like we all have, most of us have. These are not practices that are going to take us uh, to the mountaintop necessarily. Um, this is, like like you said, something that we can do and incorporate into our normal world and not have to give up living in, uh, in, in the day-to-day real world. Some folks seem like they get on a spiritual path and they need to tune out, drop out, whatever that phrase was from back in the 60s. Um, well, well, I think you can get to the top of the mountain without actually changing that much in your daily routine. <laughs> except just adding some simple practices. And if you have enough discipline to uh, to keep up a practice twice a day and get out there and get busy in the world, uh, you can get to the mountaintop that way, too. Now, just it, even though it's just 20 minutes a day um, and you say that you don't have to change too much in your life, what will other people notice about you that's changing? Because they may notice the changes first. Well, that's, that's usually how it happens because... Uh, from our perspective, uh, we, we, you know, we're Yogani, we're Scott, we're, we're whoever we are, and we go about our business. And what we might notice if we've been meditating a few weeks or a few months is that things are a bit calmer inside, and we don't seem to get as frazzled when we're dealing with the, the normal things that happen in all of our lives that are not always uh, necessarily exactly what we would like to have happening. But we, we feel more calmness inside. We also feel more creativity more energy. Uh, there, there are a lot of things, subtle things that come up that you may not notice, but someone else might notice and come up to you and say, hey, you're not nearly as cross as you usually are. What, what's going on with you? And then you'll go, oh, I am? Gee, must be the meditation. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're not necessarily the best observers of ourselves. <laughs> no, that's a good point. But uh, as we as we continue on the path of meditation, then that, that ability to observe at least in my experience, it tends to grow quite a bit. It sure does, and uh, it's a very natural process. And, and the interesting thing about this is, is that meditation, the process of meditation and the results of meditation and the whole evolution that occurs within us when we're on a path like this, it's, it, we're already wired for it. Um, we, we really already know how to do all these things. All, all we're doing with these techniques is we're sort of nudging things along and, and uh, hurrying up a little bit, a natural process that's really in, occurring in all of us um, at a glacial pace, if you will. And if you're, if you're learning meditation and keeping up a daily routine uh, of it, the, the glacier begins to melt and everything begins to move faster. And, you know, you can really see what's happening over time. Uh, even, even the meditator will notice after a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh... Although uh, the pace can be sort of glacial, as you mentioned, and uh, but that's really sort of up to us, isn't it? How fast we decide to move it, and then there are checks and balances that that make it so that we're not trying to inch down the path too quickly. Yes, that's absolutely correct, and um, we can speed it up by taking on additional practices. Uh, we have many additional practices in AYP. Um, and then there are times when we've maybe put our foot down on the accel- accelerator a little too hard, and, and we have uh, quite a battery of means for slowing things down, too, so that we can keep a good, safe, uh, and comfortable rate of uh, growth, if you will. Oh. Um, so that kind of gets into an area that we talk a lot about in AYP, and we call it self-pacing.